Okay, so we're going to continue with uh, problems. And this is like the additional question. So I'm at the sixth uh, question. Oh no, none of you have the printout. I thought I bought some last time. It's all been. It's okay, but at least the other sheets are there. Okay. Do you have some? Yeah, maybe. You Okay, so G of 16 is, uh, is defined here. Okay. So, I don't know, I think sixth question is quite, uh, seems to be quite easy. Okay. So, so, basically, it just wants you to solve the equation. So, it says find non zero solution to x plus y plus z equal to 0. Okay, so that's very easy. Just pick x and y arbitrarily non-zero. X is not equal to y, and then put z equals x plus y. You will get that. Okay. The next thing you are supposed to solve is the part A. Next thing you are supposed to solve is the x y plus y square plus y square equals. What do you do for this? Yeah. So I mean, this is GF sixteen. So if you have x plus y plus z is zero. We will also have x square plus y square plus x square 0. So, you don't have to worry too much more. So, the third part is a simultaneous equation. How do you do this? Okay. So you have to factor this. So when you factor that, what will happen? We'll get x plus y plus z times x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus x y plus y z plus x z. You have to kind of know this factorization. If you didn't know this factorization, I'm sorry. This is going to be equal to. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, no point in doing this factorization, I think, right? So, what do I do with this? This will be 0, so then what do I do? I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there is no, this is wrong, no? This is the factorization. So, this is place? No, no. So, I think the factorization is wrong, I think. Yeah, I think something like that has to happen. So I don't know. Hmm? I'm sorry. What is the solution? I don't know why I asked this question. So I'm just trying to think what is the. Hmm? So you can do it in another way. Okay, so maybe I should just talk about doing it in another way. Okay, so if you take. Uh, okay, I think I don't think you'll have a solution. No, will you have a solution? The experiment will be zero. So one of them has to be zero, the other two will be the same. Okay, so that's one way of solving it. So you put z is zero. And then you pick x equals 5. So, what are you saying? Suppose I want z to be non zero. Is it possible? It's not possible. We'll explain it as zero. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so I mean, this is one solution. Okay. So, I really don't know why you asked. There must be some something I did. I can't remember exactly what I did here. Yeah, I think this is a valid solution. There's no doubt about it. Z equals zero and x equals five. Yeah. This is a valid solution. The thing is, can you have a non-zero solution? It looks like it looks like you cannot. Okay. So this will be equal to x y z, no? Okay. Yeah. So there is some relation like that. You can show this. I forgot how you do this, but if x plus y plus z is zero, x cube plus y cube plus z cube is. Yeah. That is nothing but x cube plus y cube plus z cube plus x y z. Plus x y z. Okay. So that's the factorization. Okay. So that has to be equal to zero. 
so you will get uh, that to be equal to x plus one. Okay, so anyway, so that's that's the way you do it. So this has to be a solution. Anyway, it's not too critical for us. I think that's asked it just like that. Okay, so it's not a very critical problem. I'm not too, not too happy about this problem. Okay, so let's go to the seventh question. Okay, so seven. Prove it directly. If you don't want to think of the factorization, I have x plus y plus z is zero in the previous question. So you put z equals x plus y. Yeah. So then you both say you get x plus y. Yeah. So you can do that also. You put z equals x plus y here. You will get x plus three plus y plus three plus x plus y equals. Yeah. So you can write something. So you can do it that way. Okay. So there are various ways of doing it. Let me just not worry about it. Seventh question is just a BCH code question. It's very very similar to this too. So I'm going to skip this. Okay, it is basically a two-way correcting BCH code, and you don't have to do you have to find some dimension, minimum distance, etc. So I'm going to skip this. It's very similar to your second quiz question. And uh, yeah, so the eighth question is also very similar. Okay, so here. Okay, so eighth question also I'm going to skip. It's a simple BCH code question. Who are the correcting BCH code? You can see it. You'll see that it's it's not too hard. Okay. So let me move on to the ninth question. It's a little bit interesting. So you want to look at BCH codes n equals six sixty three and t being the error correcting capability. Okay. BCH codes. Okay. The first part wants you to find smallest T such that k, which is the dimension of this code, is not equal to n minus six. Sorry, hi. You already know the answer. Okay, you did it. Okay. So I mean, you can do it. Okay. Okay. So that's one way of doing it. You can also list it from t equals one and figure out the first one where we don't have length six. Okay, it's not very hard. You can do it. So apparently the answer is t equals five. Okay, so you can check this. And the next question is n equals two fifty five. The same question. Okay, smallest t such that k not equal to n minus six. Okay, so once again, here it's a little bit more twisted. You have to do a few more things, but apparently the answer is what? I'm sorry, eight t. The answer is t equals nine. Okay, so so you have to keep finding the cyclotronic process and stop when the length becomes smaller. Okay, so that's the ninth question. Tenth question is also a little bit interesting. Okay, I have. One other correcting RS code over GSP. Okay. So what I ask is find the non-zero code word with C4 equals C5 equals. Same to come, but the answer is instantly. So, so you narrow things. So, one and alpha can be the roots of the integer part. So, okay. So, multiply the alpha part. Okay. So, I mean, let me let me tell you. I would like to think about it. If you want the parity check matrix, it's going to be one alpha alpha square alpha plus three alpha plus four alpha plus five alpha plus six, right? Can be one alpha square, alpha plus four, alpha plus six, alpha plus eight, alpha plus ten, alpha plus twenty. Okay, I want a code word such that h times c transpose equals zero, right? And I want c four, c five, c six, c seven equals zero. So h times c transpose equals zero will imply one alpha alpha square, one alpha square alpha plus four times. 
C1, C2, C3 has to be equal to C1. Okay, so this is the equation you have to solve. Okay, so this is a very simple way of thinking about it. You can also think about it in terms of generated matrix and all. Maybe there is a way to do that. But this is an interesting way of thinking about it. Okay, so you have to solve this equation. How will you solve this equation? You have to do Gaussian elimination. Okay, so you do Gaussian elimination, make it I and something, and then pick C3 arbitrarily, then C1 and C2 will get fixed. Okay, so that's very good. Is that okay? So that's the idea. So if you want me to do just one more step, this is equivalent to to take the second row and add it to the first row, you get zero alpha plus alpha square will be something. Else. Okay. This is enough actually. Okay, it's not too bad. So you put C3 arbitrary here, you can find C2 from this equation. From C2 and C3, you can find C2. Okay, upper triangular is good enough. So you can get the answer. Okay, that's part A. Part B is also very similar, you know. I mean part B basically says find a non-zero code word what c2 equals c4 equals c5 equals c6 equals so we do a very similar thing we will get a different equation that's all you can do but okay let me move on to the 11th question Okay, and eleventh question is too simple. I'm gonna skip it. Okay, so it asks you to just find a read solomon code question. It's a standard read solomon code question. So one error correcting read solomon code over GF8. You have to find the parametric generator matrices and then decode our code. Okay, so it's a very standard question. So I'm not going to do it in detail. Okay, well. Okay, so twelfth is a BCH code question. Okay, Once again, I'm going to skip it. It's very simple. I mean, simple questions I'm going to skip because it just says there are BCH codes with uh, given n and t equals one, two, three, four. Find gender matrix, five to matrix, things like that. Right? It's no sense sir. not too hard. You have you've been also asked to find the exact minimum distance. That will require some more work, but it can be done. Okay, in most cases, G of X itself will end up being the minimum weight. I think in one case it doesn't end up being, but I'm not sure. When does it become? I don't know if you try it. I think most cases it will be like that. Okay. Okay. So the thirteenth question. Okay. So the thirteenth question says you take n equals fifteen. T equals one. Okay. Okay. And then you take the uh, so first square that I consider C one will be binary B C H. Okay. Second code I consider will be you take a read Solomon code. T equals one over zero eight. How will I make n equals 15? Binary length I want it to be 15. Okay. So I know each symbol in GF8 expands into three bits. So I, I need a n bit length here, which is 5 over GF8. Right? And I'll have a length 15 binary equivalent code. Excuse me. So you have to find the dimension of the binary code in each method. Okay, so here it's quite easy. K will be 11. What will be K here? 3 over G of 8. Okay, and then when I multiply by 3, I'll get 9. No, K will be the same, right? Okay, will reduce. Yeah, but it will be 5, comma 3, no? If T is 1, see, you shorten from 7, comma 5. And you shorten by 2. So it will be 3 comma 5. See, read Solomon code always it's n minus 2t. Okay, it's n minus 2t. So capital K will be 
5 minus 2t which is 3 over g of 8 and that when expanded will become a equals 9 ok. So, you see if you do a very solomon route you get a lower rate we knew that this will happen right bch is better than reed solomon as far as efficiency is concerned. And then in part b you have to find probability of block error expressions under bounded distance decoding of both codes ok. So, let us do that. So, this is part a. Part b if you take c1 ok it corrects only one error. So, probability of block error will be what? One minus one minus t power fifteen, right? Minus fifteen p power times one minus p power fourteen, right? So this is a simple expression under bounded distance decoding, right? How do you do it for C two? You also bounded distance, but if you correct one symbol error, so first you have to go from p to probability of symbol error. Probability of symbol error is one minus 1 minus p power 3 and then after that you write probability of block error to be 1 minus 1 minus p s power 5 minus 5 times p s times 1 minus p s power 4 ok. So, the question asks you to find the dominant term as p tends to 0. Okay, so as p tends to zero, you have to just expand. See, if you expand here, we get one minus fifteen p. Okay, and then plus fifteen choose two p squared. Okay, and after that you'll have higher terms. They they will not play a role. Here you'll have minus fifteen p. Okay, and then you'll have plus yeah fourteen times fifteen, right? P squared. So it will be one out five p squared. Yeah, minus one out five plus two ten. So you do that carefully, you'll get the answer. So if you come out to one out five p squared. What about here? You have to do it for ps first and then you have to substitute this will go this will go to 3p as uh, p tends to 0 and then you put that here and then simplify you will get an answer ok. So, this tends to 1 of 5 p square of p tends to 0 this will tend to 10 p s square and that will be 90 p p square no no it won't be as simple yeah, that term will be there, but this term will differ. So, you will become 90 p square. Ok. So, that is the thing and the part C asks you to find one advantage of C1 over C2 and another advantage of C2 over C1. Ok. What do you think an advantage, an advantage of C1 over C2? K is more. What about C2 over C1? Yeah, that is one thing where it is not. I mean, it is just a constant multiplying p square. I mean, p becomes 10 power minus 6 irrelevant what the constant outside is ok. So, what is the real advantage because you are working over g of 8 you do not have to work over g of 16 ok. So, that is an advantage for this case ok. C 1 over C 2 k is here C 2 over C 1 uh, C will be smaller. Yeah, you are right I mean probability blocker is marginally smaller, but the order is the same. So, it does not really matter. So, okay. So, next is the paint question. So, it is a concatenation question. So, you have a 2 1 code. Yes. Which question? 10 na? You are asking me RS no? BCH code such kind of things are not guaranteed. So, read solomon code you can show in any k positions out of n you will have a non-zero code. You have 7 right 
n equals 7 you pick any any k and k was what 3 right you pick any 3 positions out of 7 you will have a non-zero code word supported at that that's the result you can very easily show it's not very hard okay? from the mds property you know. okay so for bch code it's not guaranteed you can't it's not true that in every uh, thing you will put it okay so 14 is 2 1 code c1 which is 0 0 1 1 and 6 4 code c2 okay with systematic encoding okay so, so what you do is you you are doing uh, concatenation so what is concatenation you have two bits you first encode it with c1 okay how many bits will you get you get four bits okay so two code words will come out and then you encode it with c2 you will get six bits okay so you do systematic encoding here Okay, the question asks you to find C2 such that the overall code C2 comes for 6, 2, 3 code. Any ideas? Yeah, there are various possibilities. It's not very hard to do this. Right? These four bits can be 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, Yeah, I think it looks like this works. Mm. G is better. Yes. Or should it be? One for I here. Okay, what do we see? And then? So anyway, for any non-zero code word, you will at least have two here, either these two or one which will give you this one and then one. Okay, so there are various ways of doing it, it is not very hard, it is a very simple question. Okay. So let me move on to the 15th question. So here, I will claim something, you have to say if it, if it can exist or not. I will describe an object, you have to say if such an object can exist or not. Okay. So in part A, I am saying that is a 6K code C, binary code. C intersects C top equals all zero. So if you if you if you know that such a thing exists, you have to provide an example. If not, you have to prove why something like that cannot exist. Cannot exist. <laughs> 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 
If it is self dual, then C intersect C pub will be equal to C, right? You want C intersect? Huh? Yeah, I want to show, see, that's not what I want to show. See, I want to show that such a C cannot exist or give an example for such a C. It's a slight logic difference. Sir. I mean, there are, of course, a lot of codes which don't satisfy this. That's not what I'm asking. Is there a code which satisfies this? <coughs> that is what I'm asking. So you have to either find the code which satisfies this condition or, or you should say everything or all codes which not satisfy this. That cannot happen. I don't think it will happen. So when the C intersects C pub, we all zero. Let me see. No, in terms of generated matrix and parity check matrix, it's not very hard to come up with the condition. See, any code word is M times G. Any code word of the dual is M times H, right? Right? And you have G times H transpose being equal to 0. So you don't want anything to overlap. So what should happen? Okay, you're giving me an answer. So I'm just saying, under what conditions on G and H will you have C intersect C pub being all 0? Is it possible? Minus H. See what should happen? Think about it. Okay, MG is an arbitrary code word of my code. How do I test if a code belongs to the dual? How do I test the code of uh, H is for the, for the original code? For the dual code, what will I say? G transpose, right? So MG G transpose equal to zero implies what should happen? M is equal to zero. So what should happen? G G transpose should have full rank. It should be an invertible matrix. Right? G G transpose will be a K cross K matrix. Okay, it should be an invertible matrix. So that's the condition. So you have to find the three by six matrix such that G G transpose equals let's say I. Okay, is it possible? Okay, so that this is the condition, okay, G, G transpose should have full rank and there are ways to satisfy I think about how you would do it, it's not very hard, I think there are codes like this, okay. So let's go on to part B, this is a little bit more interesting, 10, 2, 7, binary code, so this is. Okay, so these kind of questions is easier to think in terms of generator matrix. Okay, so there are four code words. There are two rows in the generator matrix. Let's say V1, V2. Okay, so this one has weight greater than or equal to seven. This also has weight greater than or equal to seven. Yeah. So what will happen if this is weight seven and this is weight seven? In how many places will they have to definitely overlap? Can they be without overlapping? It's not possible. Well, the total block length is only 10. Okay, so if I can't do 7 plus 7. Okay, in how many places? At least 4 places they have to intersect. So when you add these two overlap into the weight, it will become 6 or less. Okay, so 10 to 7 cannot exist. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a logic you can use. So this cannot exist. Okay, so 16th question, we are given that there is a 7P4 linear code and you have two code words, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, then you have 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, belongs to C. Okay, so basically you have to find the code, okay, find possible parity check matrices from code. Okay. So I think it's these kind of questions are best done with the parity check matrix. Okay. You know it is 7, 3. Okay. So each column is going to have 
uh, read four. Okay. So, so let's let's think of the biological matrix in systematic form. Okay. And you have four three missing columns, right? So let me call the three missing columns as A, B. Okay. And then you have equations now. See, this code word gives you one equation, right? And this code word also gives you another equation. Okay. The only remaining piece of information you have to use is four. Okay. So what happens then is, if the minimum distance is four, the weight of each column should be at least three. Okay. It cannot go less than three. Right? If the weight of each column goes less than 3, what will happen to the minimum distance? Suppose A has weight, say, 2. Okay, then you take the first column, second column, so maybe the 2 is in the first two positions. Okay, you will get a code word of weight 3. Okay? So you cannot have any column have weight less than 2. So only weight 3 is possible. And you can quickly solve those equations assuming weight 3 or weight 4. So you quickly get the answer. It's not very hard. Okay, so it requires some more solving after this. I'm not going to get. It. I'm not going into great details here, but you write those equations and then use the fact that weight of A, B, C is at least three. Okay, there are only like five possibilities, and you'll see the equations are very easy to solve. It's not very hard. Okay, so you have, you have to just try and error with one of them. You will quickly get it. Okay. Okay, so 17th is just a standard BCS read Solomon question. I'm going to skip it. And then uh, okay, I'm going to skip it. And 18, I think we did this problem before. Okay, so but anyway, we did this before, right? In class, some concatenation, and I showed how you have to count. Basically, so the critical thing here is. If you have four errors, it is split, split into blocks in a certain way, in the, into symbols in a certain way. To consider all possible splits and show that you can always be Okay? So I'm going to skip 18. <laughs> 19 is about okay, so 18 has been done in class. 19 is about burst erasure correcting capability. Okay, burst error correcting capability. Okay. So I think I did this in class. Okay, so I'm not going to go into detail here. So this is about burst or connection capability. The trick here is to figure out what length burst will cause PRS. Okay, so it's not very hard. So if you want to find it exactly, you have to do some numerals, but it's not too hard. Okay. Okay, so 20th question is again a Reed Solomon question. So you take P equals 2, N equals 8 over N equals 7, right? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. There's something wrong with question 20. <laughs> it says 8 for Reed Solomon code over G of 8. Okay, so I'm doing some extension here. So let's just skip 20. Okay, 20, there is some bug. Okay. Take a look at it, but it's not uh, very interesting. So 21 is about again puncturing, but again there is a problem there. I said 8 comma 4 RS code over GF8. Okay, so there is also a bug here. So we skip these two questions. Alright. So that takes me to the end of assignment. Okay. So